How are you guys? So you all look good. You all look like your dads. I dress like my dad the best I could. I uh, Here's a story about my dad since it's dad night. You got to start off with the dad story, right? So my dad has this tendency to wear the ugliest shirts possible. And so one of the shirts he likes to wear is got the, it just, it's like all the flags of the entire nations all over it. And we make fun of it all the time because he tucks it in and he's so proud of that shirt. He's just so proud of it. And I say, dad, I don't know whether just to hug you or just say the Pledge of Allegiance to you. I'm just really confused. And he gets so mad at that every time we say that. So dads are funny. The older I get, the realize I'm a little bit more like my dad than what I wish. So yeah. So uh, for all of you, um, it's coming. Just be prepared. Okay. So, uh, so here's the deal. We're going to continue uh, our series on habits. All right. And this is one of probably the harder ones, but it's probably also one of the ones that a lot of you are probably doing fairly well at. All right. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about the I and the T. And the I and the T really think of it like this. The I is involvement in the church or what we call it here is I serve. All right. So a lot of you are serving. If raise your hand, if you are serving in some capacity, whether it be up here on stage doing announcements or leading worship or even in kids ministry, greeting in some way, shape or form, whether you're serving at beautiful feet on a regular basis. So there's a lot of you that are serving in some way, shape or form. Okay. And so the next one is a tithing commitment. And some of you are probably thinking, I make no money. How in the world am I supposed to give when I make nothing? All right, so we're going to talk about tithing and how that relates to you as well, okay? So here's the the bottom line for tonight is the I and the T are pretty well connected, all right? And so there's two habits, getting involved and tithing. What does the Bible say about these two, all right? So the first one is let's look at this involvement or what I would say is I serve. Why in the world is serving important? Okay, let me give you an example. If your parents give you something, do you treat it really, really nice when you first get it? Right, you take care of it, right? So your first car, right? I washed my first car every single week. I I kid you not. My friends joked that I was going to wash the paint off that car. It was the world's ugliest car. It was a Ford Escort station wagon. Hey, I know. Hey, I was the cool one. I had a sunroof on this because I had, I cut a hole in it. I didn't. I paid someone to put a sunroof. My dad said it was the ugliest, the dumbest thing I've ever done. But man, that sunroof was off every chance I got. I had the little CD player, the Velcro thing on top of the dash. It looked good, right? I was proud of my car. I washed it and I waxed it. I took great care of it. But the reason why I took great care of it was I remember paying my dad $500 a month for this piece of junk. It was the world's ugliest car. But you know what? I was proud of that car because, in a sense, it was my freedom. Now, my friends, God bless them, they were given cars. They hit mailboxes, deers, people. They sh- I remember driving to school, and they would shoot bottle rockets at other people and they would get bottle rockets. They would have smoke bombs and they would try throwing it in my car in the sunroof. Like they didn't care because their cars was just given to them. In some way, shape or form, that really relates to us. The things that you work really, really, really hard for are the things that you take care of. The things that are just given to you, sometimes we have a tendency to take it for granted. My son is nine years old, and some of you know that he wanted a PlayStation 5. And he waited an entire year for this thing. And he takes great care of it because he waited for so long. So here's what this I is all about. 
This I is about committing to God's plan. And in Matthew 6, 18, I don't know if the verses are on the screen or not. Do we have the verses? Yeah. And I will tell you, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So this is a soapbox for me. Jesus says in this passage that he is going to build his church. He doesn't say that he is going to build his parachurch organization, which is like, would be like FCA or something. He says that he's going to build his church. All right? And, and nothing is going to conquer it. But Jesus wants us to be a part of a church that teaches the Bible. And this is the way that it has been for thousands and thousands of years. If you look at the books of Acts in the New Testament, that's the story of the church. And if you look at Acts 2.46, it says that the church started growing numerically because of what people were doing. Healthy things are meant to grow. If you commit to God's plan, and if you look at how the church works, everybody is needed. I cannot play the drums. I cannot sing. I can't play the guitar. I can't play the piano. Let's be honest. I cannot clap and sing at the same time. There is way too much rhythm for that. All right? There, there are certain things that I'm really, really good at. And there's certain things that I'm not. And so everyone is needed because we all have different skill sets. And Jesus says, this is the perfect example of the church. All of us are needed. I'll give you a great story. This summer, we went to summer camp, right? And I, yeah, and, and we had two bus drivers. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I brought that up. I know. So our bus drivers didn't speak a lot of English. But guess who does? Lady. Yeah. Like at that point, we desperately needed Lady, not just because she spoke Spanish, but she's an active part of our youth group. And she was able to communicate to the bus drivers to help us, right? And so for all of you, you have some kind of like Liam Neeson skill set, right? That you need to use, that you can further the church. God says, Jesus says that he's going to build his church and he's going to build it upon Peter. He's going to build it on us using our time and our talents and our treasures. Okay. Here's a blank. This is important for you to understand. Refuse to confuse attendance for spiritual growth. For some of you, you're sitting here and you're thinking, oh, I'm here at church. You being at church does not grow you spiritually. We, we talked about it the very first week that I taught. The idea that, man, I, I can practice football one day a week and it's not gonna make me a better football player. You can be at church one or two days a week. It's what you do outside. And we're seeing this with my son playing soccer. He loves soccer, and we thought he was on a really good soccer team. So our coach decided to go to Dallas and enter a tournament, and select tournament. <laughs> In the city of Weatherford, it was normal for us to be 13 nothing, 8 nothing, 10 nothing. Oh, the other team scored a goal. We lost, but we still scored eight goals. So we went to Dallas into a tournament, and it was flipped. We had one kid that was his age that was on the other team that was throwing up because it was so hot, and he get he was just he overexerted himself. I'm like, man, that's a nine year old that's throwing. That's awesome. Like he gave it everything he got, and, and like we scored one goal, and we were that team. We're like, yes, we scored. Losers, you let us score. You're that bad of a team. You know, it's because those eat and breathe soccer. They practice. Let's be honest. Shane does not practice soccer. He practices on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that's it. That's the extent of his skill. 
That's all he wants because there's other things that he wants to do. A refuse to confuse attendance for spiritual growth. You put in what you get out, all right? The reason why we're so passionate about you serving is because what you put into something is what you get out. We want you invested in what's going on here at TBC. We just don't want you to act like students, like you're just here, but you're an active part of this church. That's why you were invited to uh, volunteer appreciation night, because you serve in a lot of different ways, and you need to be recognized for the time that you put in. When you start putting something in, you're going to get something out. You have a vested interest. Fair? Okay. Okay. The next one is tithing. What about this whole tithing thing? The church does not need your money. It's not about money. All right, Matthew 6, 33, this is what it says. All right, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. It says to seek first. Students, seek first him. Not things, not friends, not family, not money. It says to seek Jesus first. And so what happens is a lot of us, where our money is at, sometimes that is what our heart is tied to. I remember growing up, my very first car accident, I was devastated because I put everything I had into this car. It had a sunroof, it had a CD player. It it was everything to me. And when I wrecked it, it wasn't so much I got into car accidents, what am I gonna do now? Because that's where my focus was at, was with this car. I wasn't seeking him first, I wasn't trusting Jesus. It was all about Mark and what Mark's going to do, okay? The next verse. Let's skip to Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. In this idea of tithing, it says to honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. This idea is the first thing that you get, you give back to God. And and for some of you, you're thinking, I have no money. Time, talents, and treasures. It's about giving back to what God has given you. For some of you, it's your talent. On the football field, baseball field, volleyball field, soccer field, wherever it's at, it's about giving it back and honoring him with what he's given you, okay? This is also the only spot where we're told to test God. It's not about your money. It's about you trusting God, okay? Here's how the church works too, part of serve. I don't know if you guys know this, but we ask you to pay for a lot of stuff, for camp, things like that. When you start talking about the idea of summer camp, and I'll just use it really simple for you. Summer camp, we charge you $500 to $575 for camp. The actual cost of camp is $400. You're like, wow, there's an extra $150, $175 in there. Where does it go? Well, the buses that we take, which the cheap buses that we took last year, right? (laughs) Were $18,000. Yeah. That breaks down to about $100 a student. Plus, we have to put the bus drivers up in a hotel, right? Right? And and our chaperones, we don't charge them. So we kind of, as a church, eat that cost. Now, when you start adding all that stuff up together, camp could cost you somewhere between eight to $900. But what happens is because of tithing, because people trust God with what God has given them, we supplement that and we pass that savings or that cost to you. That's the way that tithing works the lights, the air conditioning that is now on. Thank you, Jesus, right? Right? All of that is paid for by people trusting Jesus that he's gonna continue to provide for them. That's why tithing. And the crazy thing is, guys, it has worked like this for thousands of years. 
It's how the church has been operated. For some odd reason, Jesus, God, knew what he was doing when he created the church. So here's my challenge for you in small groups, okay? It's really simple. Number one, if you're not serving somewhere, how can you serve? And maybe kids' ministry is not your thing. (laughs) That's okay. Maybe you can come on a Sunday morning and simply open a door and smile. That's needed. Maybe some of you like coffee and you can make coffee. Man, we can get you plugged in. For maybe some of you, it's simply, hey, opening doors for TSM or greeting, whatever it is. If you have a passion for photography or video recording, whatever it is, let's figure out what that is and figure out a way that you can use it here at Trinity. Fair? The second thing is this, is when it comes to tithing, how does it work? If you don't start now, the longer you go, the harder it's going to get. You may think tithing $10 and tithing a dollar is hard, but when you start making a hundred and you have to give 10, it gets harder and harder and harder. So the idea is you trust God now and the easier it gets later on in life. Those are all things you can talk about in your small groups, okay? I'm running a little bit late, so let me pray and then you guys are dismissed. If you don't know where to go for small groups, come find me up here in front, I will help you. And I think all of our leaders are here as a representative, so you should be good, all right, let me pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for um, the habits, Father, and spiritual habits. Father, I I pray that you would help us to, to grasp this concept of serving you because you first served us. Father, I, I pray that you'd help us to continue to, to learn what tithing looks like. For there are some in this room that have no jobs, that it's about tithing on, on their, their talents. Father, for those that have jobs in this room, that, that you would help them to see that it's not about the money, but it's about the heart and the way that it's given because they're being dependent upon you. Father, we pray all these things in your name. Amen.